Okay. Let me see. Let me make sure we good. All right, yeah, we good. Um, it's awkward because I'm looking at myself on two different screens, but now that we just now getting started and getting going live, let's just go ahead and let people <clears throat> enter the chat. It's our first one. We didn't really market it that much. Just wanted to try it out. So uh, I expect I, I don't expect many people, but I do expect some in the chat. Let me see. I'm gonna go ahead and get the chat started. Let's go ahead and say uh, <clears throat> what I want you to do is go ahead and say where you are. You know, you say your name if you like, say where you're from. Um, go ahead and put this out there. It's going to come from Pitchblade Co., but <clears throat> Tariq Ali came from Atlanta. So let's go ahead and let people kind of join in here. I hope y'all like the banner and the logo. Uh, my team had a good idea on that. And what I'm going to do is play some music, which probably would be difficult for you to hear, but is actually our own very music. So that's super cool. Um, and let's just go ahead and like, get people. <clears throat> let's, see. let's go ahead and let people get in here. Actually, let me switch it up. Let me switch it up. Let's play the original. Well, Y'all don't know, my uh, marketing research assistant, Diamond, is in here. Diamond Bowden. Diamond, you want to get in and say what's up to the people? Uh, Y'all probably see him on LinkedIn <laughs> for sure, doing all of our, all of our social, so that's dope. Amber. Amber. Also in the chat, also uh, part of the pitch play team, Amber is our public relations person. So she's here to tell me if I screw up and and put out any fires. Because it's me, it might be plenty of fires. You got Diamond who just joined the chat. Um, <clears throat> we'll get started here, but, but let, let me play that song. Let me play our original music. It's going to be pretty faint. You can't really hear it as clear as I can, but let's just start the energy as we start to get into some topics. I'm gonna talk about a couple of things today. Um, Kelly Rose came in the building. Uh, our co-founder, my wife, our co-founder and chief creative officer. This brand, oh, let me see where my point at. This brand right here, everything you see, our website, all of that came from Kelly Rose Kane. So that's super dope, that's super dope. <laughs> This music, which I danced to a billion times, it came from our music director. So, uh, Diamond over here turning up. It's hard not to. So, uh, I had to show him love. Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right. Perfect way to end it. All right, so. <clears throat> this is our first one. We're going to call it the Pitch Playground Session. The concept is just having an informal conversation. Um, for anyone that couldn't join, what we're going to do is just chop this up and put it all throughout uh, my different social media platforms. I will talk about those different platforms um, as we as we discuss and get, get into it. Um, the more difficult your questions, I think the better content we will have. Um, so... We got some filler questions in here, but we're going to start off with the most important question, obviously. We're small, we're new, we don't have a huge following. So people want to know, what on earth is Pitch Play Co? Outside of being one of the coolest branded things that you'll see, let me scoot over for a little bit um, and let's pull up our website on the screen. All right. So I'll give you my spiel. I'll tell you a little bit more about um, our, our company. But first, you know, I'm going to pull up our website. So this is Pitch Play Co. The tagline is Gamify Your Career. Gamify Your Career. Uh, so let, let's just say this. Um, how many times have you went to your job? How many times have you went to work? How many times have you thought about business and instantly got bored? Probably probably often, right? Probably too much to count. Um, that, was, that was the case for me. Uh, I, I was a business analyst at a Fortune 500 company called VMware. I got promoted every single year of my career, moved up to senior business analyst, um, operations team lead, operations manager, mergers and acquisition manager, um, cybersecurity program manager. I've seen basically every form of, of business inside of VMware, and VMware is like the mecca of corporate. These are my words, this is literally uh, the words of my ex-colleagues. Um, it's very political. It is um, 
Um, everything you would expect from a Fortune 500 company. Um, but I learned a lot. I work with people all over the world, um, which I'll get into. But right now, let's talk a little bit more about where, where's our where we're pointing here. No, let's talk a little bit more about Pitch Play Co. All right, so gamify your career. One thing that I've learned is how to help people get engaged in their career. Um, and I am a gamer myself. As you see, we're doing our platform on Twitch. The concept of this is what if I had a way to have my stats, my accolades, my achievements in a gamified version? Um, we kind of had that conversation. I'll tell you a little bit more about our story in a second. We had that conversation with a, a consultant who was actually my sister who has her own business. Um, me, Kelly, and my sister, we spoke and we came up with the idea Pitch Play Co. Like I said, everything you see, everything branded is done by a chief creative officer, uh, Kelly Rose Kane. So this symbol right here or this uh, uh, logo as it pops up on the animation, everything is done in-house. And our mission at Pitch Play Coast originally was to transform the career coaching industry by making it fun and approachable. The reason I say originally is because I've been talking to a lot of different businesses, a lot of different governments and government entities and what we want to do is essentially transform education not just careers we're starting with career coaching we're going to branch into education since i'm saying it publicly we're going to have to make that a thing all right so um diamond, diamond in the chat said family entrepreneurs that's it's funny it's funny because i can talk all about that i have two sisters who are business owners uh a father-in-law who's a business owner um Plenty of other people for us to learn from uh, to make this to make this a reality. What do we offer, though? How do you say gamify your career? What does that even mean? Considering we're trying to be some of the first people to do this, meaning I don't know if there's other businesses out there trying to attempt this exact same thing. But I know that we, along with those other businesses, if they exist, are the first. We offer game inspired courses by a show of hands in the chat. Um, how many people have ever heard of the game Roller Coaster Tycoon? Also, I don't know how many people are even in the chat besides the Pitch Play team. And I'm cool with that. Out of the Pitch Play team, how many people ever heard of the game Roller Coaster Tycoon? Um, if you don't know what Roller Coaster Tycoon is, I'm probably aging myself for the younger audience. Um, the Roller Coaster Tycoon, I think, was a game from the 90s. Um, okay, okay, Amber saying she never heard of it. So Roller Coaster Tycoon, I believe, was a game from the 90s. And the concept of Roller Coaster Tycoon was to build your dream amusement park. Um, yo, I could be tripping, but I swear it was on a floppy disk. You know what a floppy disk is, Diamond? Yeah. Yeah, all right, all right. Yeah, Diamond knows what floppy disk is. If you don't know, it's one of those square disks, essentially. I think it was on a floppy disk. Even if it wasn't, if it was on an actual CD, um, it still was. it still aged itself, right? Um, well, I like that game so much as a kid, I'm thinking in my head, okay, what if you had a way to build your own dream career, all right? And that's the concept of our first course ever, Career Tycoon. Um, you can go ahead and check out Career Tycoon. You can actually start it for free. You see our free trial there, which is super dope. But um, Career Tycoon, check out our latest course. So the concept is to build your dream career, which I'll get into a little bit more. Let's just keep going. Um, um, career career coaching. I was gonna say the funny thing about uh, roller coaster tycoon is I actually remember playing that. Um, you do in elementary school. Like, I feel like that was one of the one games they did allow us to actually play in. Yeah, <laughs> so. if if you couldn't hear it, Diamond played it in elementary school. That's how this this game has seen uh, two different generations of people um, in their adolescence playing this game. I, you might have even you remember Zoo Tycoon. Oh, yeah. You remember Zoo Tycoon? Yeah, Yo, actually. that was my favorite one. I'm not going to lie. Zoo Tycoon. Yeah, Zoo Tycoon was awesome. Build your dream zoo, right? Yeah, they had the so whole, you could have slew of you could have everything. Yeah, <laughs> they had a, a variety of different build your dream, build your dream, build your dream. So why not the same for Career Tycoon? Uh, career coaching is essentially, um, I don't know how deep you guys are into your career, but when you get to around... Um, the level I was at, career coaching was fairly expensive. Um, I think one of the first coaches I even spoke with was charging either four thousand or seven thousand um, dollars just for getting her getting in their coaching program. Um, 
I had the money, and most people at my level had the money, but let's be real. How many people have that level of disposable income to pay for a course like that? Not many um, not not many people below that level. And unfortunately, in America, there are a ton. In the world, there are a ton of people below that, that uh, financial threshold. So what we wanted to do is make something a little bit more affordable, uh, affordable for everyone. They can get all the same coaching that I got, all the same coaching that I give, all the same lessons that I got at an affordable rate. Let's put this into perspective. The pitch play pass, which you will see, let me see reporting. The pitch play pass, which you'll see on the right of the screen that I'm sharing is 375 for a year. Now, when you hear that, you're like, whoa, bro, am I paying 375 on something? Like, I, man, that's a couple J's or some bronze, whatever. I don't know if people spend their money. I'm assuming they still buying J's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm assuming so. So, um, yeah, but consider this. That's a dollar a day, a little over a dollar a day. If I told you a little over a dollar a day, you can raise your bank account by 25K per year, would you do it? Hopefully you would. That's just an investment into yourself, right? Um, essentially, what you're doing is saying, hey, you know what? For $375 for a year, I can get career coaching that people typically charge $4,000 for. That's a steal. And that's the concept that we wanted to do. The only way that would help benefit us is if we were able to reach a ton of different people. And that's why we built the model that we built. Um, even if you see on um, the pitch play pass, which I'll show you a little bit more about in a second, um, you even get, like it says up here, a free trial, right? So you can even get career coaching for free for 30 days. Right. Um, um, it's our it's our way of giving back to people that don't have that level of uh, of understanding and wisdom or, or, you know, wisdom that we were able to get throughout our career. And now everyone can get it um, at an affordable rate. <clears throat> we have two different membership tiers, the pay to play thirty five dollars a month, slightly more expensive than a dollar a day. Obviously, it's 30 to 31 days in a month, thirty five dollars a month. Um, you know, uh, it's just slightly more expensive than a little over a dollar a day. All right, so um, that's our courses. But like I said, we still have career coaching. I have my own business. That does not mean I do not want to not work. Uh, if, that, if that concept doesn't make sense to you, the higher you move up in the corporate, the less work that you do. I know that sounds weird, but trust me, I've lived it. The higher you move up, the less work that you're actually doing. Um, you play a different game at that level. Don't, don't, don't. I don't want to make it seem like you got all the time in the day. You don't. You have a little bit more freedom of how you manage that time, but I guarantee that time is still going to get filled up. Um, I was, like I said, uh, uh, program manager for cybersecurity. My, my wife is a senior UX designer, almost a senior UX uh, creative director in my mind, you know, at least in my head, based off of the work that she does. Um, the more you move up, the more you have to start delegating to other people, like Diamond saying in a in a, in a chat, you got to delegate, you got to delegate. So the more you move up, you delegate less. We're starting off and I want to touch as many people as possible in terms of helping them learn and helping them grow. Uh, so we still offer that one on one coaching. It's called next level, right? It's called next level coaching. I'll talk, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but just to introduce the concept, we're still doing that. That, that level of coaching. All right, Tyreek Ali Kane, just in case I didn't say my name, you're talking about this uh, uh, coaching and benefit, but why on earth, you know, you know, uh, would I trust you? Well, that's because we had clients that trusted us before and look where they ended up. Um, some went to Google, uh, Logitech, VMware, Amazon, Qualtrics, Galderma, Morgan Properties, CDC. You'll notice everywhere from a fortune 500 company to a small business um morgan properties is a is a i like to say an example of a smaller business uh, because it's not fortune 500 but it is it is essentially real estate right it's people that's building apartments um renting out houses stuff like that so think about it anywhere from real estate all the way to tech everything in between and everything that's not included uh um we help with that that's because every industry deals with the exact same principles of business. Business is the same regardless of the industry. I don't care what anyone tells you. 
Business is the same regardless of the industry. There are obviously different technical terms and, and, and technical principles or practices depending on the industry, but the concept of business never changes. Why do people go to school to get business degrees? It doesn't change. All right. Um, our clients have ended up on places and gotten, like I said, an increase of $25,000 in base salary. Um, let me tell you guys a story just, just to put this in perspective how effective this really is. I had an old friend from my college days at Georgia State University. Um, I, I used to be a teacher at Georgia State University. You're learning a lot about me. I know this is a lot of info I wasn't even expecting to share. I used to be a teacher at Georgia State University. I used to teach pre-calculus and college algebra. I had a student, um, and I just remember this student after I graduated from the school and went to corporate, and I remember her struggling you know, in, in, in her day to day. And she was a, a brand new mother. And I remember calling her up just to see how she was doing to check on her. And she told me in our conversation, you know, all I really want is to have $35,000 a year to support me, my mom and my son. And I'm on the, I'm on the phone. Like what'd she say? 35,000 supports y'all doing what, you know, I'm thinking in my head, like, what do you mean? But here's the reality of the situation. There are a ton of people that are living in that reality that, that yo, 35K would be huge to them. It'd be way more um, than what they're currently at, right? So that, that kind of puts stuff into perspective for me. So I helped her out. I talked to her. I uh, gave her a little bit of coaching. I said, hey, you should apply for VMware. Remember, I was there. I said, you should apply for VMware. She's like, ah, oh, you know, I I don't I don't think I'll get that, I, you know, um, this and that, that and this. I don't think I get it. I said, listen, I think you will. Trust me, I've been there. I think you have the ability to. She applies. She calls me back. And I think they offered her $62,000 a year. Almost double or reaching double of what she even wanted for her life. Right? And, and to my knowledge today, I'm sure she's making more than that. And she's doing very, very well. Doing big things, not just in her personal life, but also now giving that wealth to other people. All right. And that's the beauty of making more money. You can now help other people get more money. That is how effective our method is. And we want to share that with with as many people as possible. I might even feature her on on, on something in the future because it's a beautiful story. OK, so what if I don't want to pay? Is there no way I can learn from you? There's no way that. You can't teach me anything. Um, absolutely there is. And that's why we have the cheat codes, the cheat code block. All right. So, um, sorry, I'm getting a, we good on Twitch? All right. Perfect. Perfect. Um, the cheat codes blog. So, um, I've learned a lot and I can't share everything, you know, that I've learned. Um, it would take me forever. And by the time I taught you everything I learned up to this point, I would have learned so much more. So we're just trying to slowly get out as much knowledge as possible in our cheat codes blog. Um, Diamond, our marketing research intern, actually helped build major a lot of these blogs and got a lot of these research. And, you know, I bet the info and we go through it. Um, and it's all available for you. It's, we're, we're putting it out slowly, but we're going to continue to put it out. Our last entry was June 2nd. It's July now, so now we got more that we can get out there, and we will. Um, they're, also, they're also funny. So like, oh, and they're funny. And they're funny. I'll go through one. Let's pick, let's pick one. Being a gamer in corporate, right? Um, let's pick our, our most recent one. Um, let's be real. Majority of people entering the workforce now are a gamer um it's just it's just statistics did you know that majority of people that play games are 35 years and younger so a lot of people entering the workforce are gamers uh think about how many kids are into games today it's five years from now what are they going to be doing entering the workforce right, so uh, diamonds using the example of Fortnite. think about how many kids are just going to continue to play games and continue to grow those are the type of things that I struggle with entering corporate because no one was talking about it. So let's talk about being a gamer in corporate. That's one of the cheat codes that were put out. Um, there are going to be a ton of different, a ton of different ones that we're going to have, but that's the concept of Pitch Play Co. Um, how you feel about about the info? You got any questions? 
I, I like Diamond being here because if y'all don't have any questions, Diamond could probably uh, answer one. Or was that clear? You think it was clear? I like. Okay, I like when I hear that, especially in corporate. When no one has questions on a call, that means you did a good job, uh, or they're ready to go. Maybe you just go to next level. And- All right, so let's move on. So let's talk about well, f- let's talk about next level coaching because I didn't have that prepared. So next level coaching. Um, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? All right, so let's join the party and talk about next level coaching. And um, I think we're I think we're there. So so next level coaching. I said that I want to still do the one on one conversation, but something that I learned that is not successful is meeting one person, giving them, hey, here's your resume update, here's your LinkedIn update. All right, go out there and be somebody. That does not benefit anyone. It, it might help them get them the confidence. But it's one thing to give somebody the confidence. It's another thing to give somebody the wisdom as well. All right. So that's the next level coaching. How do I help you? How do we help you get to that next level? So this is that next level coaching. Um, so it's a three series coaching model. Um, I tested it out uh, plenty of different clients and I found something that is very, very effective. We have three sessions. The first session, self-assessment. Like we really need to break you down and really help you understand where you need to go and your next level. The second session is goal setting and planning. Um, We have this strategy called the game on strategy. It's similar to you guys probably ever heard of smart, um, um, smart, just like that. Uh, Smart is essentially, um, it's essentially a way to, to set your goals, right? All the letters in smart stand for something, just like all of the letters for game on strategy stand for something. But just to keep it simple for this, informal call goal setting and planning is the concept and lastly is implementation by that second call majority of my clients are already ready to get get to it they're already ready to get to work already ready to go ahead and do what they have to do session three is to make sure that as you embark or continue on your journey you're prepared and you don't need um you know you don't need someone still holding your hand even even if you do we have courses for affordable courses to help you continue on your journey. Um, this is a little bit more expensive than, than our, our courses. Um, but hey, before I even get into that, I want to talk about our first freelance coach, Jessica Dye, on the screen. Um, Jessica Dye used to be a colleague of mine at VMware, um, and she has a real passion for recruiting. She has a real passion for coaching, and it's definitely something that... Um, um, instantly as I speak, as I was speaking with her, catching up, I knew, oh my God, you'd be great in coaching. Um, and Jessica Dye is our first freelance coach. We have freelance coaches. These coaches do not belong to pitch play, thus making the relationship, in my opinion, more realistic than the fact that people actually want to help. They want to take their time out of their professional lives to actually coach into people. Learn more about Jessica Dye. You can read her bio. Um... If you want to learn a little bit more about me, you can read my bio, but definitely learn about Jessica. Um, I think I think I would like to see Jessica have a, a ton of clients. Um, not to overload Jessica if she's listening, but but just because um, I would like for I would like for the knowledge and the wealth to be spread is not just all coming from Tyreek Ali Kane. We'll have a team of coaches. Jessica is the, the first or second coach to join the squad, the first coach to join the squad. So the second coach on the team, we want to have plenty, plenty more. Um, you can learn a little bit more about what people are saying about us, or you can learn more about what people are saying about me and Jessica specifically um, once you're ready to join the party. So that goes into what happens when you click join the party, what happens when you click let's play you now are entering the pitch play zone. Um, I have the window kind of minimized so I can I can talk, but you'll learn a little bit more about our course, Career Tycoon. You'll learn a little bit more about um, who's it for. You'll learn a little bit more about coaching and pricing. Um, here's your pitch player zone where you can get your membership. So pay to play, pitch play pass, like I said. Um, you know, get your free trial, your next level coaching. Remember the $4,000 and $7,000? Yeah, 
yeah, we wanted to be a lot more affordable than that. So we have two different, we're going to have three in the future, but we have two different modes. One is next level coaching for 500, just normal. Two is next level coaching in advance. You just get a little bit more time. Um, but trust me, the time is more helpful. And then lastly, what we're going to introduce in the future is a third next level coaching model, which is going to also expand for entrepreneurs and freelancers. Right now, this is typically for career driven professionals. Um, and we also have a shop. So like I said, we have game inspired courses like Career Tycoon. We also have a shop from items in that game that you could actually purchase. Is that not dope? Like, come on now. Come on now. Where, where's the chat? Anybody in the chat? I, I need y'all to say that's dope. Cause like, let's be real. Like that's dope. All right. <clears throat> um, what's next? What's next? What are you talking about? Did I talk about Career Tycoon? Did I show the page or anything like that? Mm. Let's do Career Tycoon. I, think you mentioned I just mentioned it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's <laughs> shout out to Amber. All right. So let's, uh, let me talk about Career Tycoon a little bit. Um, you know what? Here's a better way. We got we got Career Tycoon, uh, but but you know here's what's inside. You can get uh, tips on resume writing, interview preparation, networking, job search strategy, professional branding, job offer negotiation. That's very very important. People don't believe that they can negotiate for their job. That's not true. Um, everyone has that right. You can always negotiate for more money. Um, job market analysis, career planning, self-assessment, and job retention. How many times have you wanted to get a job, prayed for that job, begged for that job, did anything for that job, and as soon as you got it, you was ready to go? Like a month in. like After you clocked in that fifth time, you like, bruh, I got to do this for how long? Yeah, a lot of people go through that, and that's why a lot of people struggle on job retention. They struggle retaining their job. They also struggle building a career plan. Uh, career Tycoon helps teach you all of that. Who's it for? People that just graduated or, or planning on graduate soon. Um, the comfy professional. What is the comfy professional? The comfy professional is me. Someone that was making money and not working as hard as he used to and you just start to get lazy, you kick back, you chilling, and you don't even know how to look for another role or think about anything else for your career. The tilted worker is, that, that's pretty obvious, right? Are you upset with your job? Then then you're probably like ready to go, but you still need a plan. This is for those people too. Haven't been promoted, um, um, not getting the respect that they deserve, or, or a lot of the times this happens, a not a good culture fit. That happens all the time, all the time. How you play, we should discuss that. Go to the pitch player zone. You still get your free trial. Um, I am actually the coach for this particular course. Like I said, we got a ton of courses in the – I don't even – did I mention we had more courses coming? Yeah. Oh, I ain't talk about that. Um, the DLC too. Yeah, I ain't talk about the DLC. Career Tycoon, this is the, this is the first version of what you're going to get. The reason I would suggest paying now is because when the second version drops, third version drops, fourth version drops, it's going to be so much that we're teaching you about your career in an interactive manner that it's 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 beneficial for you to start now building that dream career. And as long as you have the pass. And hey, you get the pass, you get access to the free to the free content. Hey, we might have to move you to sales. <laughs> we might we doing marketing research. We might have to move him to sales. Career tyc uh, like I said, I'm your coach for this. I'll be your coach for Career Tycoon. I'll be adding all the updated thing. Um, but wait, there's more? Yes, yes, there is more. We're going to add so much more content to Career Tycoon. <laughs> Figure out what people are saying. This is our this is our testimonies about, about the coach, about me specifically. Um, we're going to add a ton about what people are saying for Career Tycoon. Um, I want to show you a glimpse of what we have coming, but... Not yet, not yet. I'll do it. I'll do it a different, different time. Let me not get. Let me not get uh, impatient. Um, what does it look like? What does it look like when I start Career Tycoon? How does it look? No one's ever seen this. You guys on this session or watching this recording are the first people to even see what it looks like without paying or without starting your free trial. Um, first, you'll get started. We welcome you as a pitch player. And then let's talk about the first level. Remember the music director that I was talking about and the music I was playing in the beginning? 
that music was done by our music director, William Wooten. And William, Will, as I call him, created music just like you would watch or, or excuse me, just like you would listen to music on, let's say, some of your favorite uh, uh, movie titles or, or animation um, series or stuff like animated series, stuff like that. Harry Potter, for example, same song in the beginning, I think, played in a different melody on every different other movie. Diamond told me, he said, hey, people are nostalgic because of the music of video games, not necessarily the game itself or the mechanics itself. So if you consider it, everyone knows Sonic, everyone knows Mario, everyone knows Pac-Man uh, or Zelda. Um, everyone is understanding you know, uh, uh, a sound or tying a sound directly to the art. We've done that exact same thing in Career Tycoon. You're going to get the exact same gaming feel. Um, something that's rewarding in video games is when you get treasure chest items. We have those. Um, how do you apply the stuff that you're learning in the game in the real world? You're actually going to see real life sessions from me and actual clients that have agreed to be on the course. Um, and you're going to see exactly how I break down strengths and weaknesses, personality tests, best career paths, etc. And then you get missions. So you get to go on your own missions and you're doing this all the way until you become a career tycoon. Career Tycoon 2.0 have similar feel, but more mechanics. We plan on adding levels to the pitch players, um, leaderboards. Um, the more people that interact with this, the more um, that is going that is going to just grow. Um, and I'm happy with version one. Wait till you guys see version two. And guys, I've actually been through it. It's worth it. <laughs> hey, y'all heard him. Diamond say he's been through it. It's worth it. It's helping him. Um, tell me some experiences. I mean, I just went through it um, open-minded. And, you know, I pretty much was actually learning. Like, each module, um, I was being asked questions that actually made me think. It just was a nice process to go through. And do, I, do you feel like it was boring at all? Mm -mm, I had I enjoyed every moment, guys. So like you enjoyed it. If you wanna, hey, I I don't have a gun to his head or anything like that. If you wanna level up your career, I mean, I mean, we have the tools for you. You just gotta be willing and open minded. So, Are you looking forward to Career Tycoon, the second version, yes, the sir. DLC? All right, all right, perfect, perfect. And I know the, the uh, he's a, listen the next course too, so. And you excited about that? I'm excited for everybody to be able to uh, experience it like I did. Listen, y'all, I, I promise I ain't, I promise I ain't holding nothing up. Good job, good job. <laughs> All right, so that's a little bit of Career Tycoon. I want to get to some more informal topics, but I got to tell you guys where y'all can find us at. Um, we do have Instagram. We're trying our best to make it funny, just like we make our courses and just like we make our brand. Um, also, cheat codes. We're trying our best to put that out there. Um, me personally, I enjoy the memes. I don't know why people don't interact with memes as much on LinkedIn. LinkedIn people are boring. Why y'all? Why? Why is that the case? I'm gonna do some content on that. LinkedIn people are super boring, but we're trying our best to make sure your guys are getting as much information and making it as interactive as possible. Uh, YouTube as well. Obviously, that's another um, thing. It's like, if, even if you're not. I don't know why you wouldn't get the pitch play pass, but I mean, we even have small tips and stuff. On exactly, our, our exactly. Media. Get the pitch play pass, you'll benefit. Don't get the pitch play pass, but support us on social media and our different platforms, you'll benefit. Mm -hmm. um, At the end of the day, we put effort into everything we do, even exactly uh, the posts we put on Instagram. So. Exactly. And he's not saying that because the chief creative officer uh, is in the chat. <laughs> Uh, we actually put in effort to make sure you guys are getting everything. Look at this meme. How is this not hilarious? This is funny to me. All right. All right. And that, that's another thing is people don't actually like realize what all goes into. Exactly. Behind no, people don't realize what goes into behind the scenes for like building content and stuff like that. But people don't even realize what's going on behind the scenes of different careers, too. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure y'all want some wait some tea, I guess. Before we go too far, yeah. I just wanted to uh, get like a brief explanation of our hashtag. Which is past okay, the so our hashtag, pass the sticks. Uh, next time I'll have props to make sure I keep stuff up here. Our hashtag, pass the sticks. Uh, I'll put it in the chat. Diamond put it in the chat earlier, but 
learn a little bit more about our hashtag pass the sticks so there is a gamer terminology um called pass the sticks if you are a gamer you're very familiar with it um pass the sticks is essentially letting people know it's their turn to play the game um if if i was still playing two player 2k and we had tournaments once i beat somebody in a game hey you got to pass the sticks you got to get somebody else up out of here (laughs) and all of our comments our content what we would like for you to do is put hashtag pass the sticks even if you put it in the stream chat right now um we would be very appreciative also if you are in a stream chat make sure you're following us that'd be super dope um kelly to put in some sticks in the sticks means controller right we got some yeah Sticks means controller. So pass the sticks. We playing a game right here. Go ahead, pass the sticks. Um, I am a PlayStation fan. Sorry to all the Xbox users. Um, Xbox. Yeah, uh, Diamonds Team Xbox. So you, we fifty fifty in here. Uh, I don't tell Kelly. She might let you go. <laughs> all right, all right. So um, but everybody has the switch. So. Put the put in hashtag pass the sticks. Um, um, on our on our content in our in our in our YouTube, uh, whatever whatever you, you know whatever you see us on, hashtag pass the sticks. So, um, the T, the let's, let's do T time. I know I said this is gonna be from one to three. Um, I feel like it was pretty good introducing the the business. It might be, I might end it a little earlier than that, but. Um, yeah, let's get through some questions. So the first question, obviously, was what is pitch play? I didn't tell our story. I didn't tell our story. Um, I'll get to that. Um, so so we said what is pitch play? Personal branding was a question that we got. We did a poll on, on LinkedIn to ask people, what is it that you look for when looking for a job? Like, What is it that you want? Uh, we got a tie in two, question, in, in two of the answers. One was uh, personal alignment, so aligning to their goals. And the second was professional development. The third answer was obvious, right? It was like compensation, um, you know, looking to get paid. But uh, all of those answers have something in common. They're all tied to your professional branding, all right? If you're looking to align to your own goals, um, I'm actually going to stand up. I'm not used to sitting for a very long time. Um, we're gonna stand up. We're gonna change the. We're gonna change the mood here. Hold on, hold on. We're gonna do it live so you know we're authentic. <laughs> Shout out to Secret Lab. You can see the, see the, see the chair. So a lot of the time in, um, in, in corporate, people believe that when you get a job, it's like, all right. I now work for, let's say, Google. I now work for Google. I am Google. I represent Google. People do that for, and it's cool to, it's cool to have um, pride in your, in your or, or be proud of, of where you work. I was very proud of where I work. I am proud of where I work. But um, let's say you go one month only thinking about Google, two months, six months, a year, two years, three years. Just like that, five years have gone by, Google, Google. Google. All I think about is Google. You spent absolutely no time in your own professional development. That is a significant problem that a lot of the clients come to me. Um, and by the time they get to me, I have to do so much reprogramming into telling them that, hey, you have your own professional brand, um, your own personal brand, your own professional brand. Think about when you're in school, right? And, uh, and and think about when you're in school, I don't know, let's say high school, right? And and you have this dream of being a basketball player. Let's use me for example. We have my basketball in here. I don't see my ball. Let's see let's say me for example. I, I thought I was gonna be a hooper. I knew I was going to the league. You couldn't tell me nothing. So I started playing people that were real talent and I was like, Oh <laughs> I said, Oh, this, this ain't for me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about this one. I might want to do career coaching. Uh, but um, what's the difference between a basketball coach and a career coach? Let's let's just be honest. Are, is a basketball coach not somebody helping you for your career? Are they not someone helping, you know, create that game plan to make sure that you're successful on the basketball court? Um, that's the exact same concept 
for for you having a professional brand and you creating your own professional brand. Um, and let me let me move this because I know our creative director is killing us right now for not letting this be apparent. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's the same concept for uh, you know you having your own professional brand, personal brand. You can't make it to the NBA, so you give up on your dream, but you can be a coach, right? Could you not also uh, uh, work as an analyst? Could you not also work as a personal trainer, a physical therapist, um, a broadcaster, uh, 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 a, a TV personality? Um, you know, you're still in that realm still in the realm you still have your own personal goals and if you love basketball so much you can just use your personal talents to working in that field that you enjoy i I said basketball as an example but it could be anything that you really enjoy um even art all right um um, if the top two answers was aligning to your personal goal and and professional development then your top two, you should make sure that they align to your own personal goals because you'll get that. What a lot of people do is they replace their dreams with the third option, which is compensation. They're like, you know what? Uh, uh, There's no money in being, I don't know, give me something. that There's no money in being a basketball coach, a teacher, a fireman. A, a ball boy. Uh, uh, there's no money in being a ball boy. That's what you know, people would say, no, I want to go for the top dollar. I want to go for the top dollar. And they throw their dream aside because they believe that there's money elsewhere. Um, The truth of the matter is, uh, as someone who has made money, (laughs) a ton of money, uh, as someone who is still involved with a ton of money, I'll tell you, um, if I had to go back and do it, I wouldn't change anything because I'm happy for all the lessons that I learned. But the reason I stepped away from tech is because money wasn't always the answer for your own personal branding, um, for your own personal goals. The more of a brand that you have, the more you're able to sell yourself, right? Who creates value? Who decides value for you? The the contract you sign. Um, So if you sign a contract just for the money, then that's your value. Now you're giving up all of your personal your personal alignment, your personal brand, your personal dreams, your personal hope for a company's uh, mission. And because that company is paying you money, you're so, so uh, uh, invested in that company. What happens when uh, we got to do layoffs? Oh, snap. I just got laid off. I just lost 140,000. Just like that. Giving a hundred percent to that company. And now you have not given yourself any percentage and now you have to do that immediately as soon as you got laid off instantly just like that you gotta you got to uh which one company loyalty yeah we talked about that yeah instantly just like that you have to restart everything right now diamond's referring to uh company loyalty i'm gonna pull up ig again on the screen i'm gonna stand over here and we spoke about that in our social media let's discuss company loyalty all right, it's okay to commit to a company. There's nothing wrong with committing to their mission. But if you haven't done anything for yourself, how are you going to make sure that if that company lets you go, that you're good on the out on the outskirts, that you're good once you leave? Um, we, we wrote on our board we wanted to talk about AIs, but let's just give it the concept. What if your job gets replaced by AI? Do you feel lost? Why do you feel lost? You don't if you don't have your own goals of your own and you can't adjust your plan, then it's easy to get lost. It's easy to feel like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? Oh my God. You have to create your own personal brand, your own professional plan. And, and we help you do that. You know, I'm not telling you to do it uh, um, and just leaving you out the dry. I just want to get you kind of thinking about the game that you're playing. Right? That's why we that's what we're doing. Gamify your career. Right? If you're playing a game, how can you play a game without strategy? Try playing chess without strategy. You're going to lose to someone who plays chess with strategy. You're going to lose to someone who plays tic-tac-toe with strategy. The simplest strategy game or the simplest game someone's playing with strategy. You're going to lose the Connect Four. Uh, what other simple games are there? Card games, anything. Anything that someone... Uno. 
Uno. <laughs> if someone has a strategy, and even with Uno, I like it because it's random, right? Somebody might be given a way better hand than you. They might have a ton of draw fours. Oh. A ton of draw fours. <laughs> killing you with it. Now you got a whole bunch of cards, and they have two cards. Your whole bunch of cards can be equally as effective as their two cards because you have way more in your deck. It's all about how you play. All about how you strategize. It doesn't mean you always will win, but it is how you play. And that's the point of gamifying your career. It's all about how you play the game. You know, uh, <laughs> Kelly's in chat saying, no, not the draw fours. Um, I've definitely seen somebody pick up a ton of cards. He had two hands of cards before. They lost for sure. It gets ridiculous when you yeah, have to yeah. make your own card. Draw 25. Yeah. <laughs> they lost for sure. Uh, they definitely lost. But I... Um, it's all about how you play, you know, right? You're not always going to be given a good hand. You're not always going to be dealt a good hand. That's the truth. So how do you play the game? It's all about your personal branding. Never give up your own personal branding for your company's professional brand. You two got to work together. You got to work together. Just like how we're doing at Pitch Play, we're trying to become larger to help more people eat, help more people grow. You have to do the exact same thing. Uh, or a company does the exact same thing for other people, but so many people go into it going, oh, thank you so much for helping me eat. And as soon as that place leaves, they hungry. As soon as they let go, they starving. You don't want that to be the case for you. Build your professional brand for sure. Um, well, let's, let's start with how you can do that. Let's say you're a young kid. Let, let, let's start with, with, with internships. Um, oh, yeah, and you can also mention... Um, like you said, you had relationships with like um, B two O and stuff like that. How how did those mentorships? Help? Yeah, let, let's start with internships, and I'll get into that. Okay, internships. Let's say you're a young kid. I have a brand new business, Pitch Play Co. Um, getting a team in a startup is extremely difficult as you're building funding. Um, because that's what people need. They need funding. Unless they have funding coming in of their own, it is very, very difficult uh, without without having without having funding. Internships is a good way to, it, as a two-way street. Now you have someone that needs experience and you need help. Let's say you're building a business and you need help. Now you're helping them get that experience and they're helping you grow your business. As they both grow together, now that business gets money, they pay that intern long term, right? That's a concept of internships. How are you building your personal brand? It's not always about money. It only depends on how you play the game. And money is a factor. Don't get me wrong. If you live in America or, or uh, uh, if you live in any capitalistic society, money is going to be a factor. <clears throat> but if it's a resource, you got resources in game. When you play Sonic, can you beat the level Without collecting 99 coins, without getting all 100 coins, of course you can't. You don't have to get an extra life to beat the level. It's, it's helpful, but, you know, you can still play the game. Um, um, Mario, you get coins. I've seen speedrunners beat Mario, and I ain't seen them get a single coin. <laughs> it's not they, beat, mandatory. they beat the whole game. Um, regardless of where you are at in your career, you're going to have to spend money, whether you make it or not. You are going to have to spend it. You're never going to keep all of it. Trust me. Um... You're going to have to get new money. You're not going to keep old money is what I'm saying. You're, you'll probably get a lot, but you're not going to keep old. You're going to have to spend money to make money. And also, a good Unless thing, you give it to your kids and you're super wealthy, and I have not seen that. Yeah. Another thing about uh, like internships is like the thing about startups is whenever you tell somebody that you're working with a startup, they actually respect it more because they uh, realize how much work and effort is actually being put into those type of businesses. Yep, Diamond was talking about if you if you couldn't hear Diamond was talking about you know uh, working in a startup. I worked in a startup. I worked in a startup, not as an intern either. <laughs> uh, but working as a startup as an intern benefits both people. It's like, oh, you did startup, then you know that you have to wear many hats. You want to hear some startup stories? It's here. <laughs> oh my god! First or maybe third job I took was a startup. I was a business analyst, not for VMware, for a company called Airwatch. If you know about that, then you know the correlation between the two. And startups have no processes. If I were to sell Pitch Play Co. right now, the investor would say, I need to see your process. I need to see your books, your operations, your money, how you handle stuff. If I didn't have that, that 
instantly devalues the company because yeah. they know they got to have to spend money building yeah. all that. Yeah. Right. So a startup is you are building everything from scratch. You're building a train while riding in it. Right. Like you going at train speed too. <laughs> you like building that thing. <laughs> And Stairs you hope the tracks are stable. You hope it's tracks under your feet, under the train. Well, that's the concept of working in startups. So I go into startups. The culture is different, though, man. Way different in corporate. Way different in corporate. Better. Way better, too. I'm not going to lie. You work a lot, but people are more human, I say. Like in corporate, they already have those processes. They got the funding. They got the resources. Get in. Do your job. Get out. It's less stressful. Startups is... I don't even know if it's a get out. <laughs> and once you get in, you hope you go home. <laughs> you know, a startup is, is a lot of work. But it's fun, though. It's fun. It's more and more laid back, everyone working together for one mission, which I think will, that's what I think work should be, personally. Um, of course, I have never gotten to a corporation, you know, level. So I don't know how it must feel to support that many people. You obviously need an army. But startups are super cool. That goes back to delegation. <laughs> that's how you delegate. Man, when I was working at startups, bro, you know how much stuff they gave you for free? Listen, I, I had probably 40 bucks in my bank account when I was starting at a startup. I, I, this is after bills, so it's not like I was keeping that 40 bucks, you know what I mean? I'm t- when I say money ain't everything, listen to my story, man. I had 40 bucks every two weeks. I think when I was working at that startup, I had gotten a dollar raise, so now I went up to 80 bucks, you know, 40 hours, two weeks, 80 bucks in my bank account. But when I worked in this startup, the first thing I went to was the kitchen. They gave away free snack, bro. I thought it was a grocery store. When you when you not it was tech too, by the way. When you're not used to that, you was like uh, you know, when you're not used to that, you kinda are afraid to touch stuff. Cause it's free. You got free uh snacks, drinks, uh uh coffee, uh Is it a trap? you know, I'm walking in like, whoo wee, looking for the register. It was a kitchen on every floor of the startup building. <laughs> All free food. I, uh, somebody walk in, I'd be like, hey, uh, I can't, this free? It was like, yeah? Like, what the heck is wrong with you? Man, putting it in his pocket. Man, I used to go there on the weekends <laughs> with, a, uh, with, a, with a cart, boy. Put everything in the cart and cash out, man. <laughs> Facts. You couldn't do that. I'm surprised I never got in trouble for doing it. But I would definitely take stuff home. So uh, the question in the chat, how did you eat? I had free groceries. What do you mean? Yeah. I, <laughs> uh, that was after I got to the startup. But at the same time, like I said, I was there forever. You know, you work all the time. You built all the processes. Um, in fact, it's funny because uh, <laughs> it's funny. So Don, a- Amber in the chat said I, I gained 100 pounds. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. When the food is you free, do. Sure. Your food is free. You work all the time. They have pizza Fridays, free beer, free oh, drinks, God. like all the time. And you got a gut. <laughs> yeah, you get a gut for sure. But they had a ping pong room also. They had oh, basketball God. court. Like they, they have, you know what I mean? Like Oh, this is crazy. A lot of stuff. <laughs> startups was, was uh, tech startups are always trying to invest in the people because they know without the people, hey, nothing. it's nothing. We in a train right now. And we building it. So if we don't have the resources to build it, which is the people, then we're not going to do anything. Um, But you work a lot. You do work a lot. Um, But I don't know if it's that big a deal, I think. Like, looking back on it, I'd rather be working nonstop, not thinking about it, than making so much money. And I'm just sitting there all day like, yeah, what's next? Because at that point, you're thinking, like, I don't have... No value, like, where's my value? There's no value, and it also it's like, it almost feels like, what's the point? And I made so much money, what's the point of even working hard? And that's not my mentality, but everyone at that level have been in that level for so long, that's all they felt. Yeah. And to that's be fair, they I feel like a lot of people actually want that. They want easy careers where they make a lot of money. And oh, people definitely want it. So shout not, out to those people, right? But it's not as fun as it, it sounds, though. Yeah, um, shout out to those people. A lot of people do it. You know, I, I met a guy... Oh yeah, when I was at that level, uh, he was a director of maybe events or something like that when I left. So that means uh, that means he was making obviously way more money than me. So he's probably at least close to two hundred thousand a year. Wow. And I told him I had a YouTube channel. Oh, shout out, shout out to my YouTube channel if you're curious. We got a YouTube channel, go follow it. 
Um, that's my own personal thing, though. So I, I, I try not to talk too much about it. Um, but he said, man, it's so cool that you have your own uh, thing outside of work. Of we got that. I'm thinking in my head, bro. We don't work. <laughs> we sit. We, we don't do anything. You know, like. We go to an event, we organize an event. That man, organizing an event probably takes three hours of your day. If you're good enough, it probably less. Right? Have your plan and you go out and do it. The other majority of the time in your day is you on phone calls, listening to other people talk about other phone calls they're in. A lot of the, a lot of corporate was meetings. <laughs> the more you go up, the more meetings you get. Uh, I mean, I don't know about you, but I know if I was on call all day, I ain't got no time to do nothing else. And that was a concept of corporate uh, startups. You might be in a lot of calls, but you still gonna be working a lot. You probably won't even notice your calls. Startup calls are more, at least in my opinion, we're more passionate. We're yeah, more like, yo, let's get this done. Like, yo, we need this. Yo, who's gonna do this? Who's gonna volunteer? Uh, corporate is more like, all right, guys, let's do the same report we did last week and repeat. I'm gonna say another thing about startups. I feel like it's much easier to get ideas like like actually implement it into the company versus corporate. It's just like, you may have an idea, but it's more likely to get shut down. 100%. Um, I just want to clarify, not every not every corporation call or anything like that is like that. I'm just giving some um, um, extreme examples, but, but common examples. 100%, exactly. So Diamond's saying, is it easier to get your thoughts across in a startup than it is in a corporation? Listen, when, by the time you got a corporate level, you got a boss at the top. That boss got a team of people below him. And all those people in that team got a team of people below them. All those people in that team got a team of people below them. Some of them are individual contributors, but some, most of them got team members and so forth and so forth. So let's say you me and you just walk in to the bottom of that pyramid and you see exactly how we can make the company better. You tell your idea to your boss, that thing might end right there at your <laughs> boss because there's so many other people above that person that, that that person might never hear it, the person with the power to change stuff. That's why delegation is so important and that's why networking is huge. Building your career is, is not a, let me just go in, go to work, do my thing and that's it. If you're not starting to network now, you're gonna hurt yourself later because you're gonna need to know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody because you're not gonna know everybody. And that's one of the uh, actual strengths of LinkedIn, in my opinion. Strength of LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn and you wanna be a professional, I would highly advise making one. Even if that person that you want to connect with is not connecting with you, if they make content or post, you get to learn a little bit more about how they think about the business or you get to see the type of people they connected to um, and you connect with them. It's a billion people in corporate. And, you know, I'm being dramatic, obviously, but it's a ton of people in one corporation. So imagine if you were leaving one corporation and going to another. You threw away all those connections and you got to do the exact same thing as soon as you go over there. And all those connections gone. We had a... We had a new CMO at VMware. Now, a CMO is a chief marketing officer. Chief, remember I said it's a guy at the top and that guy has a team of people? That person's in that team of people. When that person came to VMware, nobody rocked with her. Not because we didn't respect her. It's because no one knew her. You got to start to build that connection. So she had to start over. I think today she's popular. I checked her out. But uh, you could lose a lot in your career just by walking away from what you built. And that thing you was mentioning the other day is like how it's much better for corporate to hire somebody within the company, like rather than. 100%. Yeah. 100%. The more, uh, it's way better to build your own talent. And I'll give you an example. Even though you guys don't see a lot of people, a lot of companies do this, you'll see a lot of people hire out. I'll give you an example why it's better to build internally. Let's go sports. Now, I'm a huge sports fan. Um, and the Miami Heat just went to the NBA Finals. This past this past season. So if you're listening down the future, 2023, Miami Heat just went to the NBA Finals. From my understanding, the media about this particular organization was they don't have any talent, but they're in the NBA Finals. That's because they had hard work, they had chemistry, and they built that organization. They built that from the bottom. The other team also built it, but they had talent. 
but the other team was the Denver Nuggets. They built theirs too, and they had talent. The, the, the similarities of the two teams in the championship is that they built their teams. Um, any champion in the past has done something. Many champions in the past have done very similar things. It's very important to build and retain talent way more than it is. Let's just buy the good players. Yeah, Jamal Murray, perfect example. Think about if you get hurt in your career like Jamal Murray on the Denver Nuggets. If you don't know these people, just think about if you get hurt in your career. To come back and to play in an NBA Finals, is it shows the trust that that organization has in you and the trust that you have in that organization to work together to get back to where you were. Mothers have to consider this. If you are on maternity leave or plan on going on maternity leave and you do that within a company that you trust, that's a much better feeling than doing that in a company you don't know if they're going to let you go when you come back. Yeah. Way better feeling to build that rapport inside a company that you actually trust. That's why networking is huge. Networking is, is a very big thing. Um, and it's a ton of people in corporate, like I said. So if you're not playing the game, the game's going to play you. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Um, that leads us to a question about personal branding, internships, and a question, am I on the right path? You know, Tyreek Ali Kane or Tyreek Ali, that makes a lot of sense. But how do I know I'm even on the right path? How do I know I'm even headed towards the right direction? I'll, I'll keep it a buck with you. I'll keep it 100 with you. You don't. I mean, who who knows that, right? Like that. That's not, that's not a simplistic question to answer. It all depends on your personal goals and professional goals and if they're aligning together. Right. Um, OK, let's say uh, let's let's continue to go sports. Let's continue to go sports. Um, and let's say we got an athlete that just signed a, a max contract from for the rest of the world. Oh, he's heading down the right path. He signed that max contract. Nothing can go wrong. He's going to build generational wealth, et cetera, et cetera. So and then a year later. The media on this player is terrible. They're talking about trying to trade this man so they don't have to pay him, send him to a new organization. And we just talked about what happens when you join a new organization. You got to build that trust all over again. Remember when I said every industry is the same? It's because every industry is the same. You got to build that trust on one team. You got to build that trust on another. And that organization might not be as good as the one you left. Who is to say you're on the right path or the wrong path? It's definitely not the money you're making. Sometimes you don't make any money and you think you're doing the right thing. And you spent 15 years not making no money and you're like, yo, what? I did this for 15 years thinking I was loyal. That's not always the case. I was promoted every single year of my career. That's rare. That's rare. And there's no guarantee I was on the right path, but I was in the great situations networking with the correct people. I was playing the game. But I, even still, I'm not there anymore. Now I'm starting my own business. Is this the right thing to do? You know, that, that's, the, that's the question. Am I on the right path? There's no simplistic answer to that. You know, it's no, oh, yeah, I'm making sure I do it. Let's forget the sports for now. And shout out to Kelly. She <laughs> says she loves the sports metaphors. Um, but the next, the next metaphor I have is a video game metaphor. We're on game, so let's talk about it. Have you, uh, give, me, give me a game that you like. Uh, boys, you doing Call of Duty right now? Call of Duty, but Call I would say Assassin's Creed. That's my Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed. I, both, both are great examples because Diamond's experience from Assassin's Creed and Call of Duty could be completely different from mine. Who's to say he's playing the right way? I'm playing the right way. Um, it all comes down to personality, background, how you were raised, pretty much. Exactly. Everyone's path is different. Think about it like this: You ever? For, for the fellas, you ever watch your lady play video games? Man. <laughs> Diamond said, man, you freak out, don't you? Like, oh, my God, what are you doing? I was trying to teach Amber how to play Call of Duty, and that was a process. You try to teach, you try to teach other people how to play the game that you want to play, the way that you play it, you might be doing that other person a disservice. Yeah. Right? Um, and most men do this because I do it all the time. I watch my wife play. I'm like, <laughs> But um, she does the same thing, though, uh, in the games that she plays. She watched me play. She's like, I wouldn't do that. Right? Everyone plays the game their own exact way. So the question is, 
am I on the right path is an unfair question to give a simplistic answer to. It's, let's see where you're currently at. Let's assess what you're doing. You know, let's, so, you know, Assassin's Creed. Oh, I'm struggling. How I know I'm on the right path? Well, let me see how you are trying to carry out this mission. Let me see how are you trying to, you know, do what you have to do. Um, Amber in the chat just said, everyone's journey in you is unique. That is the truth. Um, there's no simplistic answer. But consider it as a game. There is a way to play. Doesn't mean you will win, but it will help you from not losing and losing and losing and losing. Another thing is, I recently played a game, uh, Splinter Cell. It has three different play styles. So mm. there's even games with multiple ways you can. I I just started playing Skyrim. I've never played this way that I'm playing right now. Never, and I played it since it, it's been out. I, I'm old, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I played it since it, it's been out since uh, PlayStation Three. Mm-hmm. Ain't I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been playing Skyrim forever, and. Um, Played it again for the first time 13 years later, I think, or, or, or 11 or 12 years later. And I'm like, yo, I've never played this way. How the heck did I do this? Picture That's, being in the military. As you get older, too, it's like... Same way. Same way. The older you get, the more wisdom you have, the more you start to play a game a little bit different. See, people try to tell you, and Kelly said it perfectly in the chat, what's your path? What's your correct path? Not the correct path. People think all the time, hey, this is what you got to do to be successful. You know, you should do this. You should do that. Right? They tell you all the time what it is that you need to do. I was just going to say that social media can be misleading in that sense. Social media can be very misleading. You know, social media will tell you, uh, you know, or you'll help you compare yourself to other people. But in reality, it's like, who are you comparing yourself to? You don't even know. Especially on social, you have no idea. Um, if you look in a mirror, I bet you'll find out, though. I guarantee you'll find out. I look at all my content from three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, and I enjoy it because I know where I was in that journey, and I'm like, oh, I can get better. I can get better. I can get better. Um, Kelly in the chat saying, post every day. That's what people were saying. Post every day. Never stop posting. And then what you see? You see the same reels, the same content. You see clones. People are afraid of AI. They're already here. Yeah. They're already they here. Been here. <laughs> They've Most been people don't. Clones have always existed. Artificial intelligence always existed. Intelligence that I... It's artificial. <laughs> Not natural intelligence. Artificial intelligence. That That is the mentality that people have when they think, oh, there is a perfect way to do life. It's not... And it's not a perfect way to do your career. It almost would be Play the game to be perfect. Like, think about think about being perfect for a second. You never screw up. So every day is just awesome. <laughs> like <laughs> no joy, no struggle. Like how do you get better? How do you teach other people? Right? Um, there's no such thing as perfect. Um, what was the? So the question: Am I on the right path? Is no simplistic answer. Just figure out exactly how you're playing the game. That's the most important thing. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I was gonna ask personally, like, what were some challenges that you had with creating your own business? Challenges I had creating my own business. My God, where do I start? Okay, first off, let's just talk about how we came up with the idea of pitch play, and I think that'll I think that'll answer. A lot of questions. Um, picture making $140,000 a year. Bonuses <laughs> and stocks. You okay? And then you uh, come up with the idea, or you feel like it's God-given, and you say, I'm going to quit my job. <laughs> All right, and you're married. Yeah. Newly married. Hey, babe, you got a second? <laughs> uh, I want to quit my job, okay? That's the first step. How many people not even making it to that first step? A lot. Because, I mean, a lot of people have... A lot of people. A lot of people have responsibilities that... Per, per, you can't even do it. It prevents you from doing it. A lot of people... Not a lot of, not a lot of people even make it to that first step, okay? Um, especially if you... If your marriage is like my marriage and it's literally uh, 50-50, 
then you got to make sure you don't want a court. There's no way to step out of that. So picture that being the first step. And what if I told you the second step was harder? And the third step was harder? And the fourth step was harder? That's the challenges of creating your own business. The second step, after you go, okay, um, I, don't, I, I, I want to go from making all this money to zero dollars an hour. <laughs> um, the, second, the second step is, okay, now what's my business? What, what exactly do I want to make a business out of because once you make a business it's still work right oh it's not working it's not focusing mm. it's still work all right maybe i got stand still it's still work at the end of the day um what do you want to do every single day every single day and not make it feel like it's work mm. okay that's a tough question right yeah because that's the first question you got to ask yourself after you have that conversation of quitting your job or or, or deciding to quit your job now it's like, what do I want to do every day? Yeah, because one thing a lot of people say is, oh, I want to play video games. I want to play video games. They realize that, oh, you, that means you got to sit there, edit every day. That means And game every day. What's the joy of that now? Yeah. Now, yeah. You, now, you're not, now it's not even fun. Um, or I want to do YouTube. Or uh, I want to do music. Or I want to do this. I want to do that. Okay, but you're taking your passion and what you love and making it into your business. And not your hobby, not the thing that you love to do. Um, and all of us go through that. I've gone through that. But I thought of something in my career in corporate. Um, I had a lot of money, but I help other people make a lot of money. That was the best part. Not me making the money, helping other people get that. That story of the woman wanting 32, making 64, that or wanting 35, making 64, that was, mm, I can help people do this. So we created a business. Called Kane Creative. <laughs> I remember that. Okay, if you're not sure, Kane Creative. I might, I'm, I'm on the live stream. I might put it up in the actual YouTube video that I might make. Um, but, but, um, sorry, I'm, I feel like it's buffering a little bit. I'm watching that. I, I think it's good. Okay. Um, Kane Creative was essentially the first version of career coaching that I said. Typically. Agencies, marketing agencies, people that pay for people to, to do marketing for them, um, they go to agencies and most of the agencies have the word creative in their name. People come to me and I'm doing career coaching. Not making much sense, right? Talk about challenges. You come up with a business idea and then instantly the marketing is already struggling because of the name. <clears throat> Kelly comes to me one day and she goes, uh, we need to talk. <laughs> for every man in this world that's married or in a relationship that knows what that means <laughs> that's heard this his lady say we need to talk you're already like uh oh alright uh, let's get this over with but do I, do I need to sit down yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> should I stop what I'm doing um, I said okay okay you know what we gotta talk about we need to rebrand one thing I say as a new business owner is never be afraid to pivot. Never. Never. You're not in corporate anymore. Corporate can stay the same forever. When you are not in corporate and you don't have a steady flow of coming in, you can't be afraid to pivot. You already took that first step leaving anyway. Take the second step and pivot. It's okay. All right, cool. I call my sister. I'm like, yo, Ty, man. Kelly said, uh, Taja, Taja Perry is the business owner I'm referring to. Taja Amira, uh, her professional name. Um, the CEO and founder of Sprinkle Hair Care. I'll try to leave some info in the edited version of this. Um, I'm like, yo, Taja Kelly saying I got to rebrand. Like, oh, what I'm going to do? She said, what would y'all come up with? I didn't come up with anything yet. I'm on the way. Drives over our house. And we had a four to five our brainstorming session on what is what is it that we want to do um let's pull let's pull up i'm gonna step over here let's pull up this back again um i didn't talk about our story but you'll you can kind of read a little bit about this in our story all right what what is it that i want to do um as we were sitting here brainstorming my sister says to me she says you know you have done all these things and you are intelligent but you like video games right I said, yeah, of course. I love games. She said, why not just be you? I said, hmm. 
what do you mean? <laughs> right? Like, that's interesting. She said, why not just bring games into it or sports into it or, or, or your faith into it or anything that makes you you? Why not just do that? So we come up with the concept of Pitch Play Co. All right, you can learn a little bit more about, about our story in our, in our story section. I'm going to take this off. Um, and the thing about that is, like, it also makes it more relatable. You know? And it makes it more relatable. But I wouldn't have gotten there if I didn't make Can Creative, if we didn't go off and try, you know, if I didn't succeed and if I didn't fail in those first half years that I started a business. Going back to the journey, uh, everybody's journey. Is Everyone's different. journey is different. So we come and we go into Pitch Play Co. And, and it is what you see today and still growing, right? Um, a lot of my challenges happen mostly in corporate. And I think that made me a better business a better entrepreneur, a better business owner. And working in startups definitely made me that because it taught me the pros and cons of a startup and the pros and cons of corporate. Um, now mm-hmm. you're able to like implement that into your own your own business here, seeing how, how it was in my previous experience. Exactly. I, uh, I was going to tell you a story. It's slipping my mind right now. It'll, it'll come back to me. Um, I think I was talking about, um, uh, it'll come back to me, um, but I will say I learned a lot about office don'ts, mm. office don'ts, which you shouldn't do in an office. Uh, I feel like that's actually good. Con- actually, that'll probably be the next thing I talk, like next session we do or something like that. Don't that's a good don'ts. one. Yeah, office don'ts is a good one. Um, let see, I can't even think of a funny office don't right now that won't get me too started down the line. Y'all got any office don'ts in the chats yeah, or in the comment or anything like that? I actually have an uh, office don't. Amber said, I got a whole lot of office yeah. don'ts. Tell, you tell the story. So, uh, and, and you can step in. Yeah. Basically, uh, one time, um, Amber is actually in the film industry, and her boss actually offered us to do some stand-in work one time. And pretty much that's just like helping the camera team get like lighting and set up pretty much. And what I didn't know is that you're not supposed to record what's going <laughs> on. And pretty much I seen it happen to the guy next to me. He was recording. Um, it was actually Am- Anthony Hamilton. I don't know if you know who that yep, is. Yep, yep, yep. He was on stage performing, like trying to get his performance right. And they actually grab the dude they tell him nah you, you gotta go you can't be recording without permission and I'm like oh mm. so that's a big don't and I didn't mm. even know that until that point so mm. that's just one example of a don't so I, I like that <laughs> I like that so so did he feel like just from your experience did he feel like um, I mean I know it's a traditional rule but did it feel like it was like invasive a little bit of him practicing and him preparing and stuff like that I don't think it was invasive but you know a lot of time they sign contracts and stuff so you can't just be recording and then because who's to say if you're to like post the video of anthony anthony Hamilton yeah right right and right amber said um and amber in the chat said i once had a i once had to confront someone about reading my emails over my back oh i'd be pissed I'd be pissed. Like, hey, bro, what you doing? I know this story. <laughs> Yo, it's funny because um. It's funny because, like, consider this. Every single person that you're working with has had a completely different life experience than you. Completely different. And if you're in America, vastly different. Yeah. You living 15 minutes away from somebody could make a huge change in your whole life experiences. But yet, all these different people living 15 minutes away from each other now have to work in one building. Different cultures, different concepts, different languages all working together you know how many times i wanted to tell people off but that's all office don't you can't do that you can't tell people oh you gotta respect keep it, me keep oh, it professional you gotta keep it professional to me i would say that creates more problems than not there are sometimes office don'ts are obvious and common courtesy and there is also sometimes where office don'ts actually lead a lot more to mental health and depression because you can't express yourself Think about if you're a 25-year-old woman and a 50-year-old, 60-year-old man comes up to you and start talking because it's okay because y'all working together. Yeah. 
you'd be like, yo, I don't want to, you are, listen, <laughs> I don't want to have this conversation with you. I don't even want to talk to you. Honestly, if we were outside this building, we wouldn't talk. Yeah, and that's another thing that's funny about working is like, you'll be, your, one of your best work friends would be triple year, not triple, but double year age. Mm-hmm. It's like, where do you see that? It's a whole different environment. But when you're in those four walls, there are do's and don'ts, all right? But I think it should be, I think it should be two more categories. Can and cannot. Right, just because you can do something <laughs> <laughs> does not mean, you know, you should. Yeah. Shoot, man. It should be like, yo, if you want to respect somebody, you cannot read their email over their back. You know? Uh, you think that would be common knowledge, but. Exactly. You sitting there like so. this. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Be ridiculous, man. Like. Like, that's the truth. Um, I don't know if can and cannot and do's and don'ts is the exact same thing, but I think you get the point, right? Yeah. Like, should and shouldn't, you know, uh, you know, um, that's, 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 that's the whole point. Um, but it's so interesting. I want to do do's and don'ts on another topic because I can go deep into this, deep into this. Um, but, but the last thing that we got or that I see is career challenges. And you kind of asked me that just uh, starting off. My business, but <laughs> lastly, uh, <laughs> Emma says, <you> know, <laughs> but lastly is um, that I want to talk about is is career challenges, and um, if you are challenging um, your current situation or you feel like your career is challenging you as a human being, that is what we're here for. That is the whole purpose of Pitch Play Co. Um, I'll tell a brief story, and I'll give way more detail on this in the future, but I was in a months-long battle with HR. Months long. Months long. They were on my side. I was actually in battle with my organization through HR. Okay? Um, and, And that period of my career was so difficult. I actually remember what I was going to say earlier, because, um, in a startup, you're asked to work on stuff and create your own resolution. I actually made an AI in 2018. I remember this. It was an automation tool that actually took our process down from 30 minutes to, I mean, yeah, yeah, 15 minutes to 30 seconds. You know how much time? It's a huge time <laughs> saver. In the office, you're huge there for time eight hours. <laughs> and you know what I learned? Corporate politics is the realest thing ever. They took, They did everything in their power to try to take it or stop it. When you are a young kid, I was like 20. You said it was a civil six, war. 27, you get a civil war. I'm 26, 27, having to go to HR on my own with my small team, um, trying to fight for fight for this. And you know what the resolution was? I'll tell you this as I, as I moved up through my career. They just gave me more money. <laughs> Does more money help somebody with their trauma or mental health or anything like that? I was going to say, did, did you see that as like hush money almost? I, not at the time. You, you know, you, you make money, you're not thinking that. You're not thinking it's hush money. You're like, oh, you value me. And they want you to shut up and keep moving, right? But I took the money and I didn't shut up. And and it opened up it opened up a lot for me. Showed me a lot in my career and stuff like that. And a lot of people go through that. It might not be a Civil War battle or HR battle or anything like that, but a lot of people are in their career and they struggle some way, some some form, some fashion. They don't even go to HR. They don't even feel like they can. Who can they go to? That, that's what we're here for. That, that's the point of Pitch Play Co. Um, it's going to be tough. There's no easy path. But if there was a game that we can make out of it, let's gamify your career. If you enjoy any of this content, subscribe to Pitch. Uh, subscribe to our Twitch, anywhere on social media. Hashtag Pass the Sticks on any comment that you see. Tell people about Career Tycoon. I'm going to put this, we're going to put this on YouTube. If, if, if we can do it on social too, that's cool. Let's get some clips. Yeah, out. we can get some clips and put it on social. That's so, great. For those that did miss it. If you missed it, not a problem. It's going to be everywhere. Um, this was a fun playground session. I said <clears throat> two hours. We'll probably do, we'll probably keep it that same time frame. But, but um, I like, 
I like this this setup. <clears throat> we got One last office don't. My department head emailed my personal. Oh my goodness! I ain't gotta read nothing else. <laughs> I don't have to read anything else. Hey, listen. If someone emails you your 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 personal emails you something to your personal email and it's negative. And they took the professional out of it. At that point, it's ready for... No, nah, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, don't do nothing. Don't do nothing. Uh, well, you know, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Keep the peace. Keep the peace. But no, y'all, I appreciate all this. Um, we'll put, you know, we'll chop this up, put a lot more stuff in. We'll do a lot more of these in the future. Uh, shout out to Diamond. Shout out to Amber. Shout out to Kelly. Shout out to Jessica Dye. Andre Carr, William Wooten, the people that you can't see that makes all of this stuff happen. Um, shout out to everybody. And until next time, y'all, God bless and take it easy. Are you ready to become a career tycoon? Let's level up your career and show you how you can go from this to this. We designed our course, Career Tycoon, to be the ultimate model for college and university students, as well as working professionals. Unlock the power of your career by taking an adventure through career building levels. You'll acquire skills that can help you master the workforce. Unlock treasure and even see real life sessions with our other pitch players as they unlock their potential. All this and so much more. Are you ready? Let's play.